Daniel Epstein, Joan Rivets, Leia Fowler. Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, the last time I appeared before the Commission was at the New Brunswick, New Jersey Law Center, which is the headquarters of the New Jersey State Bar Association. I appeared before you as a trustee of the State Bar along with the president of the State Bar, Lynn Fon. Just pull up over the mic. You're taller than the speaker. Okay, too tall. Uh, Well, Stephen, I, I know you used to work for Oprah, so I'm going to pull on Oprah tonight. Um, um, the last time I appeared before the commission was at the New Jersey Law Center, which, was the, which is the headquarters of the New Jersey State Bar Association. And I appeared as a trustee of the State Bar, along with the State Bar President, Lynn Fontaine Newsom. And we um, reiterated that um, the State Bar had taken a position on this bill, on the civil unions law, uh, in opposition. At that time, we said it created a convoluted, burdensome, and flawed statutory scheme that failed to create for same-sex couples the same rights remedies as those provided to heterosexual married couples as required by the New Jersey Supreme Court in Lewis v. Harris. The legislation created a separate, unequal, and unnecessary complex statutory scheme. Tonight, I'm not appearing before you as a trustee of the State Bar, but as a lifelong citizen and resident of New Jersey, I'm also an attorney at law, and I practice down the street at Scorinci in Hollenbeck. I want to tell you that um, when the Domestic Partnership Act first came out, a number of, uh, of highly motivated attorneys um, took to the task of explaining this law to members of the Family Law Bar and, and other areas impacted by that law. We spent a considerable amount of time and effort educating people on that law. Shortly thereafter, a few years, um, New Jersey legislature pa uh, passed the civil unions law. And because that law was not marriage, we had to spend considerable hours of time again to educate members of the family law or in other areas of practice on how that, how that law impacts attorneys in the practice of law. If we had had a marriage equality statute, we would not have had to do that. Tonight I want to show you, this is the book that we use to educate attorneys in the bar about the 71-page law that was the civil unions law, that is the civil unions law. Um, I would say I had probably, um, at my four uh, courses, I had um, close to 700 attorneys come to learn about this law because the impact of the civil, law, civil unions law cuts across all practice areas family law, real estate. I actually, my main practice area, which is environmental law, is probably the only area that's not impacted by this law. Um, Ed, I, I touch on this because I know Ed Baracus from uh, ACLU New Jersey uh, talked about the considerable cost that this has put on business and industry. And I'll tell you that at the lectures that I gave on the Domestic Partnership Act, as well as the New Jersey Civil Union Law, we had quite a number of representatives from the business community, and I understand that their professional organizations also undertook to explain to their members um, how to interpret and apply the Civil Union Law. I give this as an example to show you the considerable cost and expense and problems that the legislature created for business and industry in this, in this state, as well as for the bar, by enacting a law that on its face should have been equal to marriage, but was not. So now we've spent countless hours, countless costs to business industry attorneys in order to educate on this law when the Supreme Court gave the state legislature a choice. That choice was, um, that choice was to enact marriage equality or to um, enact civil union. Um, I understand my time is up, so I'd like to come back later on if there's more time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes. We'll let you on afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.